What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. Today we are looking at the first 1.20 snapshot. This is 23W12A and we're kicking things right off, jumping straight into this little weird structure that you may not know what it is yet. This is the Trail Ruins. Trail Ruins are a new uh, feature in this update and what they have inside of them is going to be Suspicious Gravel. Suspicious Gravel is just like Suspicious Sand in that you can find pottery shards and other things inside of it by using the brush. We just found one right here and right off the bat we get the Friend Shard. Now this shard is just one of 16 new shards that are in the snapshot making a total of 20 shards in Minecraft as of this moment. We may see some more by the time 1.20 comes out. We may see some changes to their current designs, but so far we have 20 unique shard uh, shards that you can collect from Suspicious Sand or Suspicious Gravel. So the trail ruins are basically just a buried structure full of terracotta, sand, dirt, cobblestone, uh, mud bricks, glazed terracotta. So you're gonna get a lot of kind of unique blocks, especially with the glazed terracotta in here that you're not gonna find in many other places in the game naturally. And you're also going to be able to find uh, hopefully some shards and also some new armor trims. Right here we can see that there is another suspicious gravel. The suspicious gravel and suspicious sand really just have kind of a grainier effect to them than the normal uh, gravel and sand that we know in the game. And also you have to be very careful when digging in these areas because you might accidentally break some shards and things like that by not realizing that you're gonna let some gravel fall. You can see some slight textural differences as we look up at this gravel, which lets us know something is inside of it, and it looks like we actually might pull out an armor trim. We just got our first armor trim, that is the host armor trim, and one of the five new armor trims that we got in this snapshot. Now taking a look at the new armor trims here, you may notice that there's more than five. Well, there are five new armor trims, but there's also a couple changes to some of the existing armor trims. So the five new armor uh, trims that you can find are the Wayfinder, the Razor, sh Shaper, and the Host Armor Trim. Those four can be found in the Trail Ruins that we just explored. And then the other new armor trim is the Silence Armor Trim, which can be found, of course, in the Ancient Cities. It just makes sense with the name. So we've gone over the five new armor trims, but let's take a look at the changes to the existing armor trims. So the Dune Armor Trim that you can see right on the right there has a completely brand new pattern to it and a smithing template icon. The old pattern for that is now the Sentry Armor Trim, which is all the way over on the left there. A new icon has been made for that as well, of course, and the Sentry Armor Trim's old pattern is now the Shaper Armor Trim, which is right there in the middle. So just kind of a mix-up of the existing armor trims uh, to better fit them with their name and uh, create some new patterns as well. So, of course, we still may have some changes to these armor trim patterns before the final release of 1.20. We may even have some new ones. Some of these may end up with different names or switched around, but we will have to wait and find out. But currently, these are all the new armor trims and the changes to the old armor trims right here. And you may be thinking as you look at this, wow, that first sign is really messed up, isn't it? Well, that brings us right into our next segment, and that is signs. Signs have seen a massive overhaul in the snapshot, and what I mean by that is all of these signs are now, you're able to edit them after you place them. So I can click on this, and wow, I really messed up the spacing on this. Why don't we just go ahead, uh, we'll exit this all out. And now we can make this the Sentry Armor Trim, just like the rest of them. Uh, and we can edit any of these, except for this last one. And why not? Well, that's because I've used Honeycomb on it, which if you put Honeycomb on a sign now, that makes it so you're not able to edit it anymore. And it also allows for you to use clickable signs as well, which I know is very important for a lot of different servers and different functions like that. Another new thing with signs is once we go ahead and place one here, we'll put sign on the front. We can actually go around and edit the back of the sign as well. And we'll write sign back here. 
Now, what's really cool about this is you can, of course, uh, make this glow and it's not gonna make this glow either. So these signs are completely different. Uh, they may say the same thing, but that's just because I wrote the same thing. And I'm not too sure, let's test this out. Yes, so if you honeycomb the sign, it's gonna just take over both sides. Uh, so you still want to honeycomb only the signs that you're completely done with on both sides, but you can completely change it. Uh, I can even go in and get a die out. Let's do a couple dies make this one I forgot I just used honeycomb on it so we're gonna repeat this we're gonna put sign on that side on this side we will put subscribe we'll make that pink that blue will blow that one and wow that looks absolutely complete doesn't it so we'll go ahead and honeycomb that and now we can't do anything else with it but that is all the new sign functionality as well as the armor trims now. Next up, we are talking pottery shards. Pottery shards have seen a massive update and there are now 16 more of them for a total of 20 pottery shards total, which is gonna give you a ton of options for making a bunch of different pots. Uh, now I have a couple options of pots here that I just kind of randomly picked and apparently reused some. Uh, but you can see that you can craft basically anything, any one of these designs you can put around this pot here, and they actually look pretty cool. Now, these pottery shards are going to be able to be found in five different archaeology sites now. There's the Desert Wells and Desert Temples, the Cold Ocean Ruins and Warm Ocean Ruins, and of course the Trail Ruins, which we already explored. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at how you actually craft a pot out of these materials right here, if you haven't seen how to do that already. So you'll basically just take any four that you want, and you'll come over to a crafting table, and then just place them in the middle of the outside here around, and it'll give you a decorated pot. You can see here, this has the bow, the sword, little guy with his arms up in the air, and a potion. It's just gonna give you a pot with the four shards you put in there. It doesn't matter if you repeat them or if you use completely different ones at all. And of course, if you don't want a decorated pot, but you still want a pot, you can just come in here, use four bricks, and you'll get a regular pot, just like that. And of course, we're seeing some changes to the sniffer as well. And by some changes, I mean we're actually getting some functionality and some origin to the sniffer. So if you want the sniffer in your game, you're gonna have to come and find, find a warm ocean ruin. Now in these warm ocean ruins, you'll actually be able to find suspicious sand, which is what we're looking at right here. And if we go ahead and get our brush out, use our brush on the suspicious sand, we might be able to get a sniffer egg. And now it's all gonna depend on luck here. If anything, I'll just spawn one in afterwards. Come on. Oh, it looks like we're getting a shard. At least we're getting a shard out of this. We got the shelter pottery shard. So it looks like we didn't get a sniffer egg, but this is where you will be able to find them. They have a small chance of spawning. Then what you're gonna do, you'll bring your sniffer egg to land and you can put it anywhere you want. That being said, there are some beneficiaries to using specific blocks underneath the sniffer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some moss and we'll grab that here. We'll put moss under and now you can see they lit up with those green particle effects right there. So what's actually happening is that when placed on moss, the sniffer egg will spawn in about 10 minutes. On any other block, it's gonna take about 20 minutes. So if you want to half the time that it takes for your sniffer to actually come about, put it on moss and it'll only take 10 minutes for it to spawn. And then once it does, you'll have these guys or actually you'll have the smaller version, the sniffle. And also if you breed the two sniffers, instead of getting this guy, you're actually going to get an egg. So you will have to repeat the process with the egg, even if you already have found it in the warm ocean and want to just breed them. Now next up with the sniffer, you may notice that this guy already found something, and that was the torch flower seed. Now there are a couple different seeds that the sniffer will actually be able to find now. The other one is the pitcher pod. The pitcher pod 
if you put it on farmland, which I'll just do right here, even though there's no water. I'll uh, get some bone meal. Uh, the pitcher pod has five different growth stages, and that is the final stage, that's the first stage. And it will, once it turns into this, then drop these two block tall pitcher plants. These things look pretty nice. I don't believe they have any functionality yet other than uh, just their look. I uh, can't make any dyes or anything like that out of them yet, uh, but hopefully we do get some functionality to them soon. Otherwise, they are just a very nice looking decoration block. And we also have in our hands the torch flower seed, but we can grab that out as well, because that's a very nice decoration block that we've already got from the sniffer. The sniffer now is spawning two different plants, uh, which we really were only expecting one. So it's very happy. It's very great to see that we're getting some other plants out of this as well. What did this guy just... I heard something. Ooh, looks like we got a pitcher pot out of that one. Okay, so now we've seen a torch flower seed and a pitcher pot out of these guys just in the few minutes that we've been sitting here. All right, so next up, we are talking about the calibrated skulk sen sensor. And this is basically just a skulk sensor with amethyst. You'll notice that these aren't putting out any signals to those red redstone lamps right now, even though I'm running all around them. Uh, first though, we'll look at the crafting recipe for it. All you'll need is a skulk sensor and three amethyst shards, and you'll get this calibrated skulk sensor. If we place it, you can see that it's got amethyst running down to one side. That is the input side of the calibrated skulk sensor. And now what you're gonna be inputting into it is actually a redstone signal. And that redstone signal is gonna depend greatly on the length of it. So right here, you'll notice I have a three and right here I have a four redstone strength signal. And what these are gonna do is there's now categories of what these signals are. If I place a block, it'll activate the three redstone signal and this skulk sensor will pick it up and output a redstone signal. And I can place, 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 and it's never going to activate that one, but it will activate that one. Now the four redstone signal, that is going to be destroying a block. So I can destroy a block and it'll activate that, but it won't activate that one. So this is actually going to be incredibly useful uh, for making different redstone contraptions with these skulk sensors because now you can code them You can create a lot more with these skulk sensors based off of specific actions you're doing in your own game uh, Something like eating beef is redstone strength 8 which is 1 2 3 4 oh God. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 right there so eating anything, drinking anything, that final uh, sound note of that will activate that lamp. You can see right there. So if you have a door that you want to eat something to get into, you can just set up an eight strength calibrated signal and eat something and it'll open up. All right, so now I've shown you a couple of the options of what you can do with these calibrated skull sensors. There's a lot more. The whole list includes movement of any kind, land, water, or air, landing on a surface, either land or water, of course, item interactions, gliding with an elytra, or uh, a unique mob action, anything from a wolf shaking to a ravager roaring. Uh, dismounting a mob or equipping gear will activate one. Mounting a mob or interacting with a mob will activate one. Mobs and players getting damaged. Consuming items, which is the one I showed you with the beef. Blocks deactivating, uh, meaning a door closes, a chest closes, something like that. Blocks activating, which is going to be uh, a door opening, chest opening, button press. Blocks changing, uh, and that's anything from uh, putting water into a cauldron or adding food to a campfire. Blocks being destroyed, blocks being placed, which are the two that I showed you there. And then mobs and players teleporting or spawning. Uh, so this could be useful for maybe Endermen. Uh, mobs and players dying or an explosion. So that would uh, trigger one. Maybe if you had a creeper go off, that would activate one of these skulk sensor uh, templates or frequencies. So these are the current frequency categories. We may see some changes. Uh, I do currently like how simplified and set up they are. There's 15 different categories for the 15 uh, 
different frequencies of redstone strength you can put into one of these and they will trigger a whole bunch of different interactions based off of the input that you put in. But I think this is super cool. I'm definitely excited to see what the redstoners of Minecraft do with this. It's going to be super interesting seeing how they interact with these, the ideas they come up with. Uh, we're only, you know, a day into the snapshot with these, so nobody's really had much time to play around with them yet. But I'm definitely excited to see some videos that'll come out soon uh, showing off what you can really do with these things. Anyways guys, that is all the time that we have for today. We basically covered everything that's come out in the 23W12A snapshot. We'll of course be doing weekly videos for all these snapshots as long as they're coming out. Uh, and we'll definitely cover everything 1.20 as we get up closer to it. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like on it. And if you're new to our channel, hit that su subscribe button. Stick around, check out some of the rest of our content. But anyways guys, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.